Hi, I'm Pierre with BillionaireBlogs.net, and I'm here with Andrew Elliott from LG Mobile. So LG just released some new phones, or at least are showing them here at CES 2017. The first one of which is the LG Stylus 3. So could you just talk about that phone a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea with our master phone, more specifically with the Stylus 3, is to take the languages, the features, the conveniences from our high-end series and move it down into these more affordable devices. So I'm going to pick up the Stylus 3 here now. And one thing that we're going to see right out of the box, obviously with it being called the Stylus, a lot of the nuances, a lot of the new stuff is going to be packed into our Stylus pin. So right when I pull the pin out of the phone, you're going to see our Pin Pop 2.0 that gives you an intuitive menu of different ways to capture, different ways to scan photos, different ways to uh, uh, manually edit things with your pictures. And then on the left, a nuance from last year's version of the stylus is your most recent quick memos or your most recent notes. One comment that I want to make on the stylus itself, it's got a 1.8 millimeter fiber tip, so it is a lot more human centric. So let's say I'm writing on this now, um, and maybe I've got my palm resting on the edge of the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up for you now too. Um, let's say my palm hits the edge of the screen. Instead of dashing it with my palm or smudging up the screen, we've actually incorporated what's called palm rejection into the Stylus 3. So that way, even if my palm's resting on the screen of the phone, we can continue writing, doodling, whatever it is your consumer wants to do, and I'm not deactivating the Stylus with my hand. Now, some of the other miscellaneous and extracurricular features on this phone, like I said, it's about taking the high-end languages and transferring it down here. So we've got an amazing 13 megapixel camera. We're going to flip over to that. So stills are very sharp for an affordable range. And then we have a five megapixel front-facing camera that not only supports cool features like gesture shot, we even have an effortless way to take a selfie called auto shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up for you guys now. So in settings, you have selfie shot. You can just switch to your preference. So let's say I've got a handful of something. I can't really move around. Um, maybe I got a baby in my hand. Now with auto shot, all I have to do is just hold still and let it find my face. And I've got an effortless selfie in seconds, right? Pricing and availability will be made known more, uh, more towards mid Q1. And in, depending on carrier availability, um, carrier decisions, you might see a 16 gigabyte version of this phone, a 32 gigabyte version, um, what have you. So that is the majority of what we have going on the Stylus 3. Okay. So we're now here with the LG K10. So if I'm not mistaken, the previous generation had the exact same name. How do you plan on differentiating this one so that people can understand the difference? So the refreshments and the refinements that we've made in the K10, first to point out, bigger battery. So last year in the first K10, we had around a 2300 to 2400 milliamp hour battery. Now we're packing a 2800 milliamp hour battery right out of the box. But what's even more optimal for this situation, we're debuting Android Nougat right out of the box too. So you don't have to buy that high-end flagship to get the latest version of Android. So longer battery life, and even besides a bigger battery, more optimized battery thanks to our software right out of the box. Now, other than that, we have an improved camera system, and this K10, varying on carrier and market, will also support a fingerprint sensor, whereas last year's K10 didn't. Right. So just kind of to carry on the language from, and this is, this is continued from last year's K10, Everything that I just explained in the Stylus 3, we've got that 13 megapixel, really sharp for the price camera. And then we're still rocking that 5 megapixel camera. But this, the nuance with this, is we can actually go between a standard or a wide angle picture. So if I want to capture more in the selfie, if I want to get more than just me and you, I don't have to move, I don't have to change my position. It's just one tap of a button and I have that added convenience. This is actually a feature that we adopted from our, the V20. Yeah, so our, it was our premium flagship that we just launched uh, late October. We adapted that into this more affordable phone for that great value proposition. Uh, didn't the V, wasn't the V10 the model that had the uh, dual front cameras, so the wide and the regular front cameras, whereas the V20 does that on the back? 
So actually with the V20, we have a wide angle camera set up on the front and the rear. The V20 sports one physical lens that is a wide angle 120 degree lens that crops and zooms to that standard. And that's actually what we've replicated in this. So one lens that defaults to a wide angle camera but if I do just want that standard selfie to just get me, it'll still zoom and crop to get a standard selfie. Absolutely, we want all of our consumers, no matter what their budget is dictating them towards, we still want them to enjoy all of our highest end, most premium features. So whether you're spending seven, $800 on our V20, or maybe one to $300 on some of these case series, not sure about the pricing, you know, availability is gonna come to us at a later time, but no matter what your wallet is letting you purchase, we still want you to have that same premium experience. Well, that's very impressive. So now we'll move on to the V20 then, I guess. Absolutely, let's hit it. Right. So now we're here with the LG V20, LG's newest flagship phone that they announced back in early September and released later in October. So can you talk to us about a bit about what's new with this phone? Um, how much time do you have? No, all jokes aside, <laughs> we've taken everything that multimedia consumers and storytellers would pride or want to have in their pocket, and we've implemented it on the V20. So just to start out, I mean, you're looking at a 5.7 beautiful Quad HD IPS quantum display, but to tilt around to the design language, we have an all aluminum back that ensures a military grade drop and shock resistance, okay? So moving on to the camera setup, you've got our dual rear camera setup on the back as well as the front. So flipping on over to that, whether I wanna get just this or if I need to capture more to tell my whole story, there's one button to press and that segues us to the 135 degree wide angle camera. Now flipping that over, and just like I showed you with the, the K10, this is actually where we've taken inspiration for the K10. We've got that um, uh, rear, I mean, I'm sorry, selfie uh, auto camera as well that can switch between standard and wide angle lenses. Now another nuance going to the rear as well, we have a new feature. So you're recording a video, maybe in a shaky environment. You know, we, V20 is designed to give you more of what you want and less of what you don't, right? So Steady Record 2.0 is a drastic improvement from the V10. We just want to make sure it's turned on. And then even if I'm recording a video in the shakiest of situations, our software is going to reduce that shake, minimize that unintentional hand movement, and give you the video like you experienced it in real life. So top notch recording there. Now more on how it's a multimedia powerhouse. Great new niches, nuances in audio. Starting with the playback experience, we have the Hi-Fi Quad DAC. So if I took nasty ocean water and I didn't filter it at all, you're obviously not gonna wanna drink it, but if I filter that out four times, it's the Sony quality at that point, right? Same exact thing. So with any wired connection where you're listening to your audio, listening to any kind of music, this Hi-Fi Quad DAC will convert your digital sound to 32-bit Hi-Fi analog music and it converts it four times, hence the name Quad DAC. So your playback experience with a wire connection is best in class. Now, not just with playback, but also with recording, we have your own studio in the go, in your pocket, with our HD Audio Recorder app. So what you'll see up here at the top with the second screen, there's three different presets. You have normal, concert, and custom. So no matter who you are or where you are, we have that creative control to record the most lossless audio. So whether I'm a college student trying to pick up my professor's lecture or I create my own music, you guys would not want to hear that, by the way. I have access to control my low cut filter, my limiter, my gain, and this even translates to when you're recording video, you can have that same superior audio quality in your video recording. So what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna open up manual video recording, which is only debuted on the V20. I'm gonna go to my settings, make sure Hi-Fi is turned on. And even as I'm recording, I can access Hi-Fi wow. and update the sound settings in real time. Now with this, I also have directivity. So let's say I wanted to focus my voice more to me, or focus the video more to my voice. 
all I have to do is just press this down and it's gonna give sound dominance to this microphone and vice versa. Maybe I'm at a concert and I want the band to be heard more than my friends and I. Then all I have to do is swing it upwards to where this top microphone will capture more of the sound around me. And last but not least with the V20, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't call out the second screen, right? So this is everyday convenience, a perfect way to stay in touch with who you need to get in contact with and your apps. So right up here from the second screen, you get some really great features like personalizing a signature or quick tools, uh, your most favorite apps, favorite contacts. If you have a calendar update to remind you of something going on later that day, it's all available with the V20. Also, when you turn it off, you get this always on display. Apologies for the demo. But even when your screen's off, you're not having to constantly power on your phone to check what's going on, which saves a ton of battery, right? What other questions do you have for me? Um, so, a lot of people, or I don't know, maybe not a lot of people, but s some people could actually compare the second screen to the touch bar on the new MacBook Pros. So, what are kind of some of the similarities and differences that you would find between this second screen and that touch bar on the new MacBook Pros? Well, I can't speak to what our competition's doing, um, especially in a, a different realm than mobile with laptops primarily, but with the V20, we're dedicated and focused to the same languages of having everyday convenience or having easy access to a favorite app, a favorite person, or maybe you need to multitask a little bit better. That's what the second screen is dedicated to doing. Well, thank you so much for your time. So this has been uh, Andrew Elliott talking about some of LG's new phones and some not as new but still pretty new phones at CES 2017. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.